let us discuss chemical bonding chemical bonding what do you mean by a chemical bond look here one or more electrons attracted by more than one nucleus try to understand this definition one or more electrons attracted by more than one nucleus what is the essential difference between an atom and a molecule atom and a molecule in an atom you have only one nucleus one nucleus attracting one electron electrons are under the influence of one nucleus only in a molecule the electrons are under the influence of more than one nucleus in a hydrogen molecule h2 you have two nuclei and two electrons both the electrons are attracted by both the nuclei whereas in an atom there is only one positive one nucleus you will see more than one positive therefore now you say these two hydrogens are bonded or you can look at that that way also electron is holding the nuclei this electron is attracting both the nuclei so this electron is bringing the nuclei together how do two positive charges come close this is positive this is positive how can they come close they don't come close a negative charge will bring them together they are brought together by a negative charge so one or more electrons attracted by more than one nucleus is bonding and what are the important things in uh, the examination point of view especially in competitive exams we will be facing some questions like this number of pi bonds in so3 how can you find for which you need to know the structure and for that purpose first things first what we'll do is how to draw any structure let us learn how to draw any structure at least this covers most of the structures hydrogen h f c l b r i O minus, they always form one bond. I will explain myself later. They always form one bond means when they are terminal atoms. For example, in PCl5, chlorine is said to be the terminal atom. Phosphorus is the central atom. Phosphorus is at the center, and five chlorines are approaching. These are called terminal atoms. So. when hydrogen is a terminal atom or any one of these is a terminal atom what they do is they form one bond only and oxygen forms wherever it is as a, a terminal atom two bonds and any plus in a group the role of any plus in a group is to accept a pair of electrons a lone pair of electrons plus if you have a positive species it accepts a pair of electrons and any other minus any other minus other than o minus we have already mentioned what o minus is capable of o minus can form one bond any other minus other than o minus donates a pair of electrons donates a pair of electrons now let us apply this the simplest possible way so3 how to draw the structure of so3 and through that through which only you know how many pi bonds are there sulfur is the central atom how do we know which is a central atom whichever is one is central atom obviously 
there is only one sulfur that is center and a host it's like a host and three oxygens what is the role of oxygen we already discussed oxygen forms two bonds two bonds over now we have got three sigma and three pi bonds so3 one sulfur three oxygens each of them forming two bonds so3 now let us po4 3 minus phosphorus is the central atom here p o4 1 2 3 4 po4 four oxygens but three of them are minuses it the formula itself suggests three minus so minus 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 o minus so out of the four oxygens only one is an oxygen atom the other three are o minus ions and what is the role of oxygen you see oxygen forms two bonds i am just translating what i have written there o minus forms one bond one one over that is the structure of po4 three minus anyone can draw by just applying simple procedure now so4 two minus how will you draw one sulfur four oxygens two of them are minus out of the four oxygens two are minuses oxygen forms what is the role of oxygen two bonds two o minus one so don't worry whether sulfur can form six bonds or not 1 2 3 4 5 6 don't worry about it yet it's too early now bf4 minus bf4 minus now one boron four fluorines it's all there in the formula i am not using anything from outside whatever is given in the formula i am just spelling it out i'm just spelling it out one boron four fluorine one of them is a minus fluorine forms one bond f minus what is the role of minus in a group whenever there is a minus a minus donates a pair of electrons to the central atom minus and this is called a coordinate covalent bond whenever somebody is donating a pair of electrons so be a four minus next nh4 plus nh4 plus one nitrogen four hydrogens one of them is a plus what is the role of hydrogen hydrogen forms one bond what is the role of plus in a group what is the role of plus in a group a plus accepts a pair of electrons plus is accepting a pair okay now this is the first principle what is the first principle h f c l b r i o minus they form one bond oxygen forms two bonds plus accepts a pair of electrons next two more than one central atom suppose there are more than one central atoms then distribute all other atoms equally distribute equally more than one central atom distribute equally cr2 o7 2 minus cr2 o7 2 minus you have two chromiums seven oxygens 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 cr2 o7 2 minus look here i'll write it again so more than one central atom distribute equally cr2 o7 2 minus so now you have two chromiums and of course seven oxygens two chromiums seven oxygens 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 the seventh one is also equally distributed whatever 
is there that has to be equally distributed and 2 minus 2 of the oxygens are negatives distribute them also equally. Now what is the role of oxygen forms 2 bonds 2 O minus forms 1 bond 2 1 each that is all CR2 O7 2 minus. So more than one central atom distribute equally that is the second instruction. Third for nitrogen, suppose you have more than three months. You need to have one dative bond. For nitrogen, more than three bonds, one of the bonds should be a dative bond. I tell you what. NO3 minus. 1 nitrogen, 3 oxygens, one of them is a minus, NO3 minus. 1 nitrogen, 3 oxygens, one of them is a minus. Oxygen forms 2 bonds, O minus forms 1 bond. And therefore, what is the role of nitrogen? The quota of 3, three bonds are over. The quota of 3 bonds are over. Therefore, this must be a dative bond, coordinate covalent bond like this. Fourth instruction being try to avoid lone pairs as far as possible from a structure. Try to avoid lone pairs as far as possible. You know why? The lone pairs repel the bond pairs and cause strain to the geometry. Why? For oxy acids. For oxy acid, what are oxy acids? Acids which have both oxygen and hydrogen. Acid that has both oxygen and hydrogen. H2SO4 is an oxy acid. H3PO4 is an oxy acid. For oxy acids, number of OH groups, number of OH groups is equal to number of hydrogens present there in some matter. Of course, we have nearly 60, 70 oxy acids and in the case of just three of the acids, they are an exception. H3PO3, H3PO2 and H3BO3. Of course, H3BO3, they are, there are three OH groups. You have two OH groups only here, one only here, three. Three hydrogens are there, three OHs are there, but that is an exception for some other reason. Now, H2SO4, how will you draw the structure? H2SO4, one sulfur, sulfur the central atom and two hydrogens, number of OH groups is equal to number of hydrogens present. Since you have two hydrogens, you draw two OH. What else you are left with? Two oxygens. Two oxygens, they form two bonds each, H2SO4. That's all. As simple as that. Now, H4P2O7. H4P2O7. What is that you should notice? There are two phosphorus atoms. Two central atoms are there. Two phosphorus, two central atoms. How many OH groups are there? The number of OH groups is equal to number of hydrogens present. 4 hydrogens, 4 OH, 1, 2, distribute equally, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 3 more oxygens, 1, 2, 3. What is the role of oxygen? Forms 2 bonds, 2 bonds, 1, 1. That's all. For oxy acids, number of OH groups is equal to number of hydrogens present. Now, why is H3PO3 an exception to that rule? That is in fact not an exception and that is a part of a huge generalization. Let us see what that is. H3PO3, 1 phosphorus, 3 OH groups is what you and I would like to write. This is how we would have liked to write POH thrice. This is how we wish it is. Okay. 
but the structure of H3PO3 is not this because after forming three bonds, phosphorus is left with a lone pair, a pair of electrons unused. And to avoid that lone pair, we had an instruction earlier, uh, avoid the lone pairs as far as possible. Therefore, a little change in the structure P double bond O, OH, OH and H, this is it. So, one of the hydrogens is directly bonded to phosphorus, so that phosphorus can have a tetrahedral geometry and it can get rid of its lone pair. Now, H3PO3, H2S2O7, how will you draw the structure? Two sulfurs, two central atoms, recollect the rule, more than one central atom distribute equally. Since you have two sulfurs, two OH groups, two OH and you have a total of seven oxygens and five more oxygens are left, distribute equally, one, two, three, four, five, two, two. What is the role of oxygen? Forms two bonds and O once again acting as a bridge, H2, S2. So, that is all about how to draw any structure. Using this, we can almost write all, all uh, our level structures, if not complex structures, this, this could be drawn. Next, how to find hybridization? And in that structures part, you must have got a doubt. Sir, we have seen a few elements like hydrogen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine and just oxygen and O minus. We how 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 with just 6 or 7 elements, how can you say any structure there are 80, 150 elements? The reason is most, uh, most of them are metals out of the 115, 80 order metals and they do not generally form covalent bonds, I mean metals mostly form ionic bonds, they do not form covalent bonds, therefore structure is there only for a covalent bond and in a covalent bond only non-metals participate, noble gases in any case do not participate in bonding. So, what are the other non-metals we have? Sulphur, phosphorus, carbon, silicon and carbon, sulphur they are in most cases they are the central atoms rather than terminal atoms. Carbon will never be a terminal atom. You never see, you will never see a compound called ClC3 where carbon is a terminal atom. Okay. Therefore, the rarest exception being sulfur, carbon disulfide. It is of course similar to carbon dioxide. Okay, CO2, CS2, all in the same. So, though we have learned a few elements, one, two, three, hardly five, six elements, we are we are saying that. Uh, we can draw any structure using this knowledge. Okay? There may be one or two cases you may not be able to apply, but that you know you should not be worried about that because 99% uh, of the structures is made possible. One or two, okay. Complex structures you may not be suppose you may not be able to draw B4 O7 2 minus that Na2 B4 O7 borax, and you may not be able to draw the structure using that principle B4 O7 2 minus. We have to, have to learn one or those two separately. Most most things you learn in a general way, and if there are any one or two things out of the ordinary, you learn them separately. That should not be a big problem. How to find hybridization in most cases? H is equal to V plus M minus C plus A by 2. Do not worry about the hugeness of this formula, it is no big formula, its application is quite simple. V is equal to number of valence electrons of the central atom. Most cases that is group number, number of valence electrons of the central atom, in most cases it is group number except in the case of 
xenon because xenon happens to be in the zero group but the valence electrons are eight so for this purpose we say xenon belongs to eighth group as far as this question is concerned m is number of monovalent atoms number of monovalent atoms that is you should not consider monovalent terminal atoms you should not consider a species like oxygen forget oxygens just forget oxygens ignore oxygens so3 the three oxygens are not counted at all then c is cationic charge charge of a cation mean suppose there is some positive charge as a positively charged ion you subtract the charge a anionic charge anionic charge this is some kind of a shortcut no doubt i agree but we need a procedure and this helps in finding almost 99.99% of the hybridizations uh, after, after doing all this h is equal to 2 you will get sp 3 sp 2 like that so on so forth 4 sp 3 5 sp 3 d sp 3 d 2 sp 3 d 3 as the case may be okay you can proceed to answer that now apply this for start with nh3 nh3 what is hybridization of nitrogen in ammonia the question will be the hybridization of nitrogen in ammonia is how will you find that valence electrons nitrogen belongs to the fifth group that's why i said group number is extremely important 5 plus monovalent atoms three hydrogens hydrogen is monovalent means which forms one bond this m has not much of a meaning this m suggests you don't consider oxygens consider all others three hydrogens you have to consider them 5 plus 3 minus 2 5 plus 3 by 2 it is equal 4 the hybridization is sp3 so the hybridization of nitrogen in ammonia is sp3 what i mean to tell you here is though the formula appears to be very big its application is very simple 5 plus 3 by 2 what about the c and a when the question is about cation this is c comes into picture when the question is about an anion ammonia is neither neither anion or cation it is not charged nh3 next so3 so3 sulfur belongs to sixth group 6 plus 0 by 2 Six plus zero. Why zero? Oxygens are not considered. Six plus zero by two, three sp two. Like this, you can apply this formula any number of cases. Then NH four plus NH four plus nitrogen number of valence electrons five five plus four minus one by two valence electrons five. Plus four minus one by two. Five plus four minus one by two. How much will that be? Okay. Sp three once again. Now. So four two minus valence electrons of sulfur six oxygens. Forget. Ignore oxygens. Therefore, six plus zero plus two by two. Six plus zero plus two by two. So after all, seven hundred six plus two by two, eight by two, four. Sp three. Now. PCl five. Phosphorus. You should know that phosphorus belongs to fifth group. The group number is extremely important. Five plus five by two. Five plus five by two. Five. Sp three d. so one big hurdle how to find hybridization of any molecule so you can apply this in any number of examples so cl2 the hybridization of sulfur how to find that central atom is sulfur 6 oxygen 0 6 plus 0 plus 2 by 2 6 plus oxygens are not considered since you have two chlorines you take 6 plus 2 by 2 sp3 once again 
XeO2 F2 8 plus 0 plus 2 by 2. What is this 8 plus 0 plus 2 by 2? Xenon has 8 valence electrons. Oxygen, oxygens are not considered. So, 8 plus 0 plus 2 by 2. 10 by 2 which happens to be 5 sp3d. 8 plus 0 plus 2 by 2. So, how to find hybridization? So, what is that we have done so far? How to draw any structure? How to find hybridization? And for carbon only, this is for carbon only. For carbon only, no pi bond. Suppose you do not have a pi bond. Since we have, we have to find the hybridization of large number of carbons in organic chemistry, we need to have a special procedure for carbon. No pi bond, the hybridization is sp3. One pi bond, the hybridization is sp2. Two pi bonds, the hybridization is sp. What does it tell you? Pi bonds are eating into pure orbitals. Pi bonds are consuming pure orbitals. They, they do not want hybrid orbitals. So, carbon is forming one pi bond means it has got four orbitals and you have to leave one orbital, one, uh, one p. The other, uh, that p using that p, a pi bond is formed. No pi bond, sp3. Now, let us try to find out the hybridization of each of the following. What about this carbon? It has got one pi bond sp2. What about this carbon? This carbon has two pi bonds on either side sp. One pi bond sp2. One pi bond sp2. One pi bond sp2. Two pi bonds sp2. Two pi bonds sp. That's all. Two pi bonds. So, whenever carbon is for not forming a pi bond, it is sp3. Next, valency is of two types. Valency, two varieties. One is electrovalency, covalency, electrovalency, covalency. What is electrovalency? The number of electrons lost or gained by an atom. The number of electrons lost or gained by an atom, of course, in an ionic bond. Number of electrons lost or gained in an ionic bond. Now, Covalency is the number of electrons shared, number of electrons shared by an atom. Number of electrons shared. So, this electrovalency will be obvious in compounds. MgO magnesium is losing two electrons, oxygen is gaining two electrons, Mg2 plus O minus. But this covalency is somewhat hidden, we have to find this out. So, covalency is equal to number of bonds formed. Including dative bonds including dative, dative means coordinate covalent, dative bonds. So, the covalency should include the number of dative bonds also. So, how to find the maximum covalency, maximum covalency. What is the maximum covalency of nitrogen? What is the maximum covalency of phosphorus? Whenever such a question arises, 
how to find that first of all unpaired electrons unpaired electrons suppose there are unpaired electrons in the electronic configuration when you write the electronic configuration if you come across unpaired electrons unpaired electrons are used in sharing and covalent bonds are formed covalent bonds are formed unpaired electrons are used in sharing covalent bonds are formed two paired electrons suppose you have paired electrons what will you do with a pair of electrons they are excited if possible if possible in the sense if there are vacant orbitals excited if possible and more covalent bonds are formed more covalent bonds are formed if not suppose it's not possible to excite the electrons suppose it's not possible to excite the electrons because of the non availability of any vacant orbitals they are donated as such donated to form dative bond remember the warning only one pair is donated only one pair is donated vacant orbitals suppose you have vacant orbitals vacant orbitals are used in accepting accepting pairs of electrons accepting pairs of electrons and dative bonds are formed you accept until you get a maximum of 6 bonds until you accept pairs until you get a covalency of 6 let us apply these rules so unpaired electrons are used in sharing covalent bonds are formed paired electrons are excited if possible if not they are donated as it is the pair is donated and vacant orbitals are used in accepting pairs and more dative bonds are formed now let us apply this with beryllium beryllium Two s one, two p x one, two p y zero, two p z zero. The original configuration of beryllium is one s two, two s two, and its ground state it is two s two. In its excited state itself, it is two s one, two p x one, two p y zero, two p z zero. Look here. Beryllium has just two electrons in its outermost shell. What we believe about beryllium is it better bond, better forms uh, ionic bonds, loses the two electrons to somebody, becomes beryllium two plus ion, and we prefer beryllium to form ionic bonds. It's not our preference that is important. What beryllium does is important. Look here. Why doesn't beryllium generally form ionic bonds? Since it has only two. Uh, electrons after it loses beryllium 2 plus what happens very once it loses two electrons it has four protons versus four electrons look here four protons versus four electrons so if it loses just two electrons it becomes four protons versus two electrons means too much of positive charge and there is an imbalance of positive and negative charges therefore beryllium doesn't prefer to form ionic bonds and our textbooks say when beryllium forms beryllium 2 plus it is it becomes a very small ion and 
small ions are more covalent okay so when beryllium ion is formed it develops covalent character it doesn't mean that it forms beryllium ions and then it develops covalent character to start with it is covalent it has a covalent tendency when you read the statement from books what you misunderstand is beryllium forms be 2 plus ions and then since uh, beryllium 2 plus is very small because of huge positive charge four units of positive charge and two units of negative charge be 2 plus is very small and small cations are being more covalent it may they may make you believe that first beryllium 2 plus is formed and then covalency is created it is not the case beryllium straight away doesn't prefer to form ionic bonds because losing two electrons is very difficult for it now so what does beryllium do it has got two electrons only in the valence shell by sharing two more it gets four only it doesn't get the octet but there is no alternative if you get an octet rule what is that octet rule you get eight electrons in your outermost shell it's okay octet rule is okay but if it is not possible to get an octet what is that one can do i want an octet if i don't get an octet i'll be satisfied with whatever i get so beryllium also has two electrons in the outermost shell valence shell only two and that two after excitation it the pair becomes unpaired originally it is a pair of electrons and only after excitation after giving energy after breaking the pair it becomes unpaired now it has so apply this unpaired electrons are used in sharing unpaired electrons are used in sharing so beryllium forms two bonds by sharing and uh, uh, what else it can do beryllium forms two bonds example becl2 okay becl2 beryllium forms two bonds becl2 and uh, what else it can do it has got vacant orbitals so if someone donates a pair of electrons it becomes ready to accept and it becomes four so it will accept two more pairs b f4 two minus two pairs it has accepted two pairs so now what happens you see beryllium originally has two electrons sharing two electrons it has got four and is accepting two pairs so this is the electron of beryllium this is the electron of beryllium this is the electron of fluorine this is the electron of fluorine these are the pairs of f minus f f f minus f minus so who is in contact with beryllium two fluorines which are sharing two electrons two fluorines which are sharing two electrons and two f minus which are donating two pairs so that that's that's how beryllium got octet indirectly so beryllium to start with forms beryllium fluoride f minus f minus be of 4 2 minus so beryllium accept by so what is the maximum covalency of beryllium means whether by sharing or accepting donating the maximum covalency happen to be 4 so let us look at the maximum covalency of boron boron 2 has 3 electrons only in its outermost shell 2 3 atomic number is 5 number of valence electrons 3 so 2s1 2px1 2py1 2pz0 what is that boron can do it has three unpaired electrons and i told you unpaired electrons are used in sharing so boron can share three electrons and it has a vacant orbital it can accept a pair of electrons therefore the maximum covalency of boron is 4 examples being boron trifluoride and bf4 minus what is boron doing in bf4 minus three fluorines one bond each and f minus donates so the maximum covalency is 4 so look at it at final time unpaired electrons are used in sharing and covalent bonds are formed paired electrons are excited if possible so we have applied unpaired electrons to start with let us look at the second one nitrogen 2s2 
टू पी एक्स वन टू पी वाई वन टू पी जेड वन इट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर यू टू राइट इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कॉन्फिग्रेशन यूजिंग द हुस रोल मीन्स यू शुड नॉट राइट इट एज टू पी थ्री टू पी थ्री डजेंट टेल यू एनी थिंग टू पी एक्स वन टू पी वाई वन टू पी जेड वन बिकॉज नाउ इट इज क्लियर दैट nitrogen has three unpaired electrons and there's three unpaired electrons are used in sharing so nitrogen forms three bonds as in the case of ammonia now what else nitrogen can do so we should account for all the valence electrons what they are doing now it has two more electrons but this is being a pair of electrons this pair can be used only when this is excited but when the 2s electrons are excited there is no orbital here there is no vacant orbital here we expect uh, uh, we don't expect a 2d here okay therefore the pair cannot be excited so here excitation is not possible so what will you do if excitation is not possible you donate them so nitrogen donates that pair of electrons and forms the fourth bond look here NH4+ NH4+ nitrogen one nitrogen four hydrogens one of them is a plus that's what we learnt in structures and hydrogen forms one bond and nitrogen still has a pair of electrons it donates by donating the pair the shape of nitrogen goes from pyramidal to tetrahedral that way the bond angle has increased slightly 107 uh, to 109.5 degrees so the atoms are relatively less strained now the bonds are less strained now nh4 plus that's the reason nitrogen donates the lone pair so why are lone pairs donated the lone pairs are present in a structure they cause some repulsion now the maximum covalency of nitrogen then is 4 nh4 plus look at oxygen 2s2 2px2 2py1 2pz1 this is the condition of oxygen what is it oxygen can do in this state oxygen has two unpaired electrons they both are used in sharing and there is a pair of electrons which which can be donated there are two pairs but i have already warned you even though you have two pairs you can donate only one pair i tell you why so the maximum covalency of oxygen is 3 you don't see any substance where you have more than three bonds formed by oxygen h2o h2o where oxygen has two lone pairs the pairs remain pairs and the unpaired electrons which are shared with hydrogen they are already shared with hydrogen two pairs and two unpaired electrons which are shared with hydrogen so you count the octet 1 2 3 4 4 into 8 electrons now what is this water molecule can do it will donate one lone pair h o h h plus so there is another lone pair but that cannot be donated because after oxygen donates oxygen gets a formal positive charge formal positive charge means we treat oxygen uh, as a plus now since it has donated two electrons it is as good as losing one donating two electrons means sharing two electrons means your is like e losing one electron and oxygen gets a formal positive charge the positive one falls on this oxygen now so now it can't donate any further so the maximum covalency of oxygen is 3 and look at phosphorus 3s2 3px1 3py1 3pz1 similar to nitrogen the only difference being 3s instead of 2s nitrogen belongs to second period and you know the elements of second period 1s 2s 2p 3s 3p elements of second period lithium to 
fluorine they have only s and p sub levels and they have only four orbitals one s orbital and three p orbitals so they have only four orbitals so their maximum covalency can be four only after all said and done what is required for bond formation space around the nucleus if there is space around the nucleus your electrons uh, can travel uh, along with others electrons or both your electrons will be going to another nucleus or someone else pair of electrons may be approaching you so what is required is there should be some space for the incoming electrons be it yours or be it uh, others now so second period elements at best can form four bonds but what about this phosphorus 3s2 this is the ground state ground state electronic configuration now what can phosphorus do in its ground state you see three unpaired electrons forms three bonds and there is a pair which can be donated so 3 4 3 4 max in ground state phosphorus can form three bonds as well as four bonds but how how is the fourth bond formed fourth bond is not a normal bond it is formed only through donation so ph3 ph4 plus ph3 ph4 plus just like nh3 nh4 plus this this is no new thing this is only imitating nitrogen nh3 nh4 plus ground state and what else can phosphorus do phosphorus in its excited state when phosphorus is in its excited state excited state look here 3s1 3px1 3py1 3pz1 3d1 where has this come from this 3s electron when some energy is given it goes to the 3d state so what is required for bond formation unpaired electrons paired electrons vacant orbitals if pure vacant orbitals are there you can invite others electrons if you have a pair of electrons you can give them to others you can donate them to others so there are so many ways of bond formation it is not necessarily losing or gaining as in the case of ionic bond you can share you can donate you can accept so considering all these things the maximum covalency so 3s2 3px1 3py3 bz1 we in fact have so many zeros 3d0 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 so many zeros 5 zeros 3d0 five vacant d orbitals are there so one of these orbitals is used for excitation when some energy is given it go, goes there like that so it's possible for all atoms to form bonds even helium also can form bonds for that matter helium 1s2 1s2 how can it form bonds sir it's a noble gas it is an inert gas it doesn't participate in bond formation why the reason for all such things in chemistry is this look here for helium to form bonds the electrons have to be separated it's a pair of electrons only when it is separated they can form bonds for which what is required 1s1 2s1 okay when you give energy the pair will get separated no doubt 1s will go to 2s this will definitely take place there is no question about it when energy is given who can stop this the pair of electrons is broken now you have got two unpaired electrons and now a bond is formed so helium also can form helium chloride helium can form helium chloride that may sound surprising to you it can form helium chloride but it doesn't form because look at the logic for this excitation energy is required that is you have to spend 100 calories 100 calories for excitation say say whenever a bond is formed energy is released can you tell me why when a bond is formed look here here the nucleus 
only one nucleus is attracting the electron in an atom. Here is an atom, only one nucleus is attracting. This is the electron orbit of the electron. One nucleus attracting the electron. Suppose another nucleus also happens to come close to this and this is attracted by another nucleus also. Now, what is happening? Two nuclei are attracting, the electron comes closer to the nucleus, comes closer. So, what happens when the electron comes closer to the nucleus, energy is released. When, when the electron comes close to, to take the electron away, you have to give energy. To take the electron from first orbit to second orbit to third orbit, you have to give energy. But when the electron comes close, it definitely loses energy. Therefore, during bond formation, energy is released. So, the energy released in the bond formation of helium and chlorine is not very high. Say, it is only 10 calories per 10 calories. What is that you have achieved? For exciting the electrons, 100 calories have been spent and when the bond is formed, 20 calories have been released. So, there is a loss of 80. You have spent 100 rupees and uh, you are getting only 20. No fool does it. Therefore, the energy involved has to be compensated in a process. The energy required must be produced elsewhere. Therefore, here when is excitation possible is very clear. The energy required for excitation if it is compensated during bond formation. So, it is rather easy to excite the electron here. Phosphorus chlorine bond is formed when a bond is formed between phosphorus and chlorine, okay, some energy is released. Now, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, and there are so many zeros, 3D0, 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 3D0. So, phosphorus in its excited state can form 5 bonds as in the case of PCL5. You know each chlorine uh, forms 1 bond with the central atom, 5, five chlorines, 5 bonds. Now, what else phosphorus can do? Phosphorus we have already seen can form 3 bonds, 4 bonds, 5 bonds. And how can it form more bonds? How can it form more bonds? That is, look here. It has got so many vacant orbitals. Phosphorus got a lot of empty space. Now, if somebody offers a pair of electrons, pair of electrons, phosphorus takes and forms 6 bonds as in the case of PCL6 minus, PCL6 minus. Now, you may get a doubt, sir, there are more vacant orbitals, why do not you go on accepting PCL7, 2 minus. Here, who are involved? Chlorine, 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 chlorine. This is Cl minus. So, one more Cl minus, one more bond, another Cl minus, another bond like that. Why can't you form PCL 9, 4 minus? So, after PCL 6 minus, you do not see any further accepting on the part of phosphorus. So, the question is why not more than 6? In most cases, the maximum covalency is 6. Most cases, the rare examples being uh, the halogens, chlorine, bromine, iodine and xenon. Their maximum covalency is 7. Xenon, the maximum covalency is even 8. Xenon can form even 8 bonds. In the case of XeO4, xenon tetroxide, Xe double bond O, double bond O. So, xenon in fact forms 8 bonds. Okay. So, why are they forming 8 bonds and uh, halogens forming 7 bonds, all others maximum 6? In their case, all those electrons belong to themselves. The electrons participating in xenon are the electrons of xenon himself. And IF7, the 7 electrons used for sharing belongs to iodine. Therefore, here you are borrowing, you are actually accepting pairs from someone. So, why not more than 6? The answer is, why even 6? If you ask me, why not more than 6, I am asking you, why even 6? PCL5, if you look at it, 5 plus 5, it already has got 10 electrons in its outermost shell. 10 valence electrons, 5 belonging to phosphorus, 
uh, one each from five chlorines, ten electrons. So you have ten electrons for PCl five. Ten electrons are there, and uh, even after you have ten electrons, you are still accepting it. It, ha it has to be explained because. If you are short of electrons, as in the case of boron trifluoride, boron trifluoride, three plus three six, okay, it is less than eight. Boron trifluoride has less than eight, and such species are called electron deficient species. Electron deficient. Boron hasn't got the octet, but it has it had no alternative. Therefore, it formed BF three. So, if a, a boron trifluoride accepts a pair of electrons. It is understandable. Okay, you will say boron uh, has a shortage of electrons, therefore he is taking from others. But when you look at PCl5, it is an electron surplus. It has got ten electrons. But why is it still accepting? The answer lies in this six will give it octahedral geometry, and trigonal bipyramidal. Between trigonal, bipyramidal, and octahedral geometries, octahedral is more comfortable, more stable because trigonal, bipyramidal is a triangular base. Triangular base it is some kind of overcrowding. Therefore, in many compounds, you see after octahedral, after forming six bonds, they stop accepting any more. Therefore, why not more than six? The answer is why even six? Even six is to get that octahedral geometry. So maximum covalency of most of the elements is six. Now let us conclude uh, with the chlorine three s two, three p x two, three p y two, three p z one. It has got three pairs and one unpaired electron. How many bonds can chlorine form? It can form one bond in its ground state. Suppose three s two, three p x two, three p y one, three p z one, three d one. What is this? This is excited. This pair is broken. This pair is excited. Now you have got three unpaired electrons. It can form three bonds. So one bond, as in the case of HCl. Three bonds, as in the case of Cl O two minus. How to draw the structure of ClO2 minus? Look here. ClO2 minus chlorine is forming three bonds. How can chlorine form three bonds? It, this is called first excited state. In its first excited state, that is after breaking one pair. Second excited state, break one more pair. So excite these electrons also. You have so many Ds. 3s2. 3p x 1, 3p y 1, 3p z 1, 3d 1, 3d 1. Now you have five unpaired electrons. Cl O 3 minus one more oxygen. Cl O 3 minus. Cl O 3 minus. So as you go on forming bonds. Now third excited state. One more excited state. 3s2 to 3s1, 3p x1, 3p y1, 3p z1, 3d1, 3d1, 3d1. So seven bonds also ClO4 minus ClO4 minus ClO minus one bond. Look at this ClO minus ClO2 minus ClO3 minus ClO4 minus. So ClO4 minus you indeed have seven. So chlorine can form seven bonds because it is not borrowing electrons from anyone. It is using its own electrons. If you use your own electrons, okay, you can form any number of bonds. So xenon that way has four pairs. After breaking all the four pairs, it will be able to form eight bonds. Xenon forms two bonds XeF2, four bonds XeF4, six bonds F XeF6. XeO4, eight, even eight bonds. Two, four, six, eight. So, xenon shows all these valencies. A uh, valency of two, uh, four, six, eight. So, conclusion: maximum covalency of all elements 
बेरिलियम बोरॉन अल्यूमिनियम गैलियम इंडियम कार्बन सिलिकॉन जर्मेनियम स्टैनम नाइट्रोजन फास्फोरस आर्सेनिक एंटीमनी ऑक्सीजन सल्फर सेलिनियम टेलूरियम फ्लोरिन क्लोरिन ब्रोमिन आयोडिन एंड एक्जेनॉन सो बेरिलियम टू नाइट्रोजन सेकेंड पीरियड एलिमेंट्स मैक्सिमम कोवलेंसी फोर हाउ कैन बेरिलियम फॉर्म फोर बॉन्ड्स टू बाई शेयरिंग टू बाई एक्सेप्टिंग हाउ कैन बोर ऑन फॉर्म फोर बॉन्ड्स थ्री बाई शेयरिंग वन बाई एक्सेप्टिंग बिकॉज इट बिलोंग्स टू थर्ड ग्रुप हाउ कैन कार्बन फॉर्म फोर बॉन्ड्स यूजिंग हिट्स ओन इलेक्ट्रॉन सी हिट्स फोर आई विल सप्लाई एग्जाम्पल्स टू ईच एंड फ्रॉम अल्यूमिनियम टू टेल्यूरियम look at large chunk of them have a maximum covalency of 6 in fact 4 into 3 12 elements have a maximum covalency of 6 chlorine bromine iodine they have a maximum covalency of 7 xenon 8 oxygen 3 fluorine okay you can say 2 if you want you can say maximum covalency of fluorine is 2 how by sharing one by donating one fluorine you can say two now let me supply with examples bef4 two minus what does this tell you two minus means two f minuses two donors there are two donors means beryllium is forming only two bonds on its own two own two donation boron bf4 minus So three bonds on its own. Third group, it can form three bonds on its own. One by borrowing, be a four minus. CH four. It has four electrons. It need not borrow anything. It can form four bonds straight away. NH four plus. For nitrogen, it has to form four bonds. The only way it can form bonds is it has a pair of electrons, and that has to be donated. And H three O plus. H three O plus. Oxygen maximum three. And in the case of aluminium, it is Al F six three minus aluminium forming six bonds. How you look at the three minus? What does the minus tell you? What is the role of a minus in a group? Towards the beginning of the chapter, I told you minus donates. So there are three minuses, three donors. So three are donating, three are uh, sharing. Silicon Si F six. How can a fourth group element form six bonds? Fourth group element means which has four electrons. You have to understand my question. How can a fourth group element form six bonds? Means I am indirectly asking you, how can a fellow who has got only four electrons form six bonds? He accepts two pairs, two minus. So S F six two minus. Okay, P C L six minus. Fifth group forming six bonds means one pair has been accepted from others. Sulfur SF six, chlorine ClO four minus, bromine BrO four minus, iodine IF seven, xenon XeO four. These are the examples of maximum covalency. Of how you can imitate all others? GAF six G like this. You can. That can be continued. maximum covalence look here bismuth 6s2 6p x1 6p y1 6p z1 all right what can bismuth do theoretically it has three unpaired electrons it can share and in its excited state suppose the electrons are excited 6s electrons 6s1 6p x1 6p y1 6p z1 6d1 bismuth can form five bonds also i repeat can form bismuth can form five bonds also if necessary but the thing is bismuth is not willing to form five bonds i tell you why Wait a minute. 
सिक्स एस टू सिक्स पी एक्स वन सिक्स पी वाई वन सिक्स पी जड वन सपोज इफ दी पेयर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन इज एक्साइटेड सिक्स एस वन सिक्स पी एक्स वन सिक्स डी वन सो बिस्मत इन इट्स ग्राउंड स्टेट कन फॉर्म बी आई सी एल थ्री फॉर्मिंग थ्री बॉन्ड्स विथ क्लोर इन बी आई सी एल थ्री एंड बी आई सी एल थ्री वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव बी आई सी एल फाइव फाइव बॉन्ड्स बी आई सी एल फाइव इट कैन फॉर्म थ्री बॉन्ड्स बाई शेयरिंग एंड इट कैन ऑल्सो फॉर्म फाइव बॉन्ड्स बाई शेयरिंग But but Bismuth is not willing to form five bonds. Is not willing. Why? I tell you a little later. But as of now, you just take this statement. Any question on? Any question on thallium, lead, bismuth, polonium? Only these four elements. Only these four elements. I repeat. thallium lead bismuth polonium you start thinking in terms of inert pair effect think in terms of inert pair effect what is that inert pair effect let me tell you inert pair effect preferring preferring lower oxidation states and fewer number of bonds preferring lower oxidation states and fewer number of bonds is called inert pair effect preferring it doesn't mean that they can't form five bonds bismuth can form five bonds but it doesn't prefer to form five bonds because okay let's see why preferring lower oxidation states and fewer number of bonds so between pbcl2 and pbcl4 lead prefers pbcl2 between bi3 plus and bi5 plus the lower oxidation state is preferred by bismuth thallium lead bismuth polonium they all prefer lower oxidation states and fewer number of bonds the reason is i'll give you the actual reason later or i think i have already given the actual reason the for any happening or non happening in chemistry there is only one reason the energy involved must be compensated for anything to happen if this takes place that happens otherwise it won't happen it is only concern of energy only look here for instance 6s2 6p x1 6p y1 6p z1 the energy required to excite the electron 6s2 6s2 to 6d for you to promote the electron certain energy is involved and that is not compensated in bond formation bicl bond is not very strong and uh, bicl bond is not very strong and not a lot of energy is released therefore Bismuth doesn't show any willingness to form, and this reluctance of a pair of electrons, reluctance, reluctance of a pair of electrons to get separated and participate in bonding, get separated and participate in bonding. the unwillingness the reluctance of a pair of electrons to get separated and participate in bonding this pair is not willing to get separated not willing to get separated in the sense it involves a lot of energy the energy lot lot in the sense i never mean lot only relatively the energy required is more and the energy released is less so what happens when more bonds are formed energy is released so while while all other elements while all other elements want to form as many bonds as possible for example phosphorus will you form three bonds or five bonds phosphorus says i form why i want to form five bonds phosphorus prefers more and more bonds the reason being in small atoms they they are afraid of the lone pairs 
the loan pair bond pair repulsions are high therefore the pair has to be separated the pair will be separated but in a big atom bicl5 big atom the lone pair can't create much impact on the bond pairs because it's a very big atom bismuth is very big the lone pair can't show so they they are, they are not to be avoided i said lone pairs have to be avoided but here now so thallium lend bismuth polonium they prefer to form fewer bonds and bismuth bi is between bicl3 and bicl5 bicl3 and look here pbo2 is a good oxidizing agent you hear this statement why pbo2 is a good oxidizing agent you go back to the definition we gave in periodic properties what is a reducing agent one who gives electrons what is an oxidizing agent opposites are opposite okay what is a reducing agent reducing agent one who one who gives electrons okay so what is an oxidizing agent one who takes electrons what is the indirect meaning of this pbo2 is a good oxidizing agent means pbo2 wants to take electrons why in pbo2 lead is in plus 4 oxidation state and in the plus 4 oxidation state lead prefers plus 2 why inert pair effect that's all Pl plus 2 of lead is preferred to plus 4 of lead 2 so the consequence pbo2 is a good oxidizing agent means pbo2 wants to take electrons so that its oxidation state decreases from plus 4 to plus 2 by taking electrons what happens plus 4 minus minus it become plus 2 Plus four minus one. Electron means minus one. Plus four minus one minus one. Net plus two. So, like that. So, where can you see this inert pair? While well, all other elements, they want to go to high oxidation state, as many bonds as possible. Only these four are satisfied with the minimum number of bonds. Minimum number of bonds. Lead says okay, but no one exhibits. inert pair effect in front of fluorine no one exhibits inert pair effect in front of means no inert pair effect. so which is better bif3 or bif5 bif bif5 so this itself proves that the cost involved is compensated the pair of electrons is broken some energy is required and when fluorine forms bond the bond is stronger so the bif bond and the bicl bond what is the essential difference small atoms form stronger bonds bif bond is stronger than bicl bond therefore as a result more energy is released bif bond bicl bond more energy is released in this process okay that's it small atoms from stronger bonds therefore what is the actual reason despite whatever we say it is the energy that matters finally okay the energy required for in initially the energy required initially should be constant common common con, okay compensated eventually that has to be compensated eventually that is the essence of anything cost price should be less than selling price cost price less than selling price the cost involved must be compensated that is the economics of chemistry now shapes of molecules shapes we usually have a tendency to invoke the idea of hybridization while discussing shape L frequently i get this reply from students methane what is the average of methane they say no no what is the shape of methane they say tetrahedral when i ask them why they say it is sp3 hybridized so you are indirectly relating hybridization and shape and i warn you hybridization and shape are mutually exclusive they have nothing in common 
because ammonia hybridization sp3 but shape is pyramidal shape is pyramidal h2o hybridization again is sp3 but the shape is v shape so hybridization has not got anything to do with shape don't confuse the ideas now shape depends on what the shape of a molecule depends on number of bond pairs guest atoms guest atoms surrounding atoms terminal atoms terminal atoms number of bond pairs and number of lone pairs that's all it depends on the number of bond pairs and the number of lone pairs so most importantly before we try to find shape you should find the number of lone pairs how to find what do you mean by number of lone pairs <laughs> number of unused electrons in bonding how many electrons are not being used look here number of valence electrons of the central atom of course we are always interested in the central atom only number of valence electrons of the central atom minus number of electrons used in bonding used in bonding by 2 it means how many you have how many you have spent and how many pairs are remaining as simple as that number of valence electrons how many you have and number of electrons used in bonding how many you have used in bonding for example let me find out the lone pairs in sncl2 sncl2 what about this 4 minus 2 by 2 stannum belongs to fourth group from the beginning of this topic i have been warning you to no which element belongs to which group the moment i say stannum if you fourth group comes to your mind sncl to 4 2 so there is a lone pair 4 minus 2 by 2 one lone pair and h3 so you take a host of molecules and practice all these on this don't do hundreds of questions instead of doing hundreds of questions i'll give you a host of molecules nh3 bf3 co2 sncl2 sicl4 sncl2 like this you take so many molecules so3 xeo4 xeo3 xef2 so some 60 molecules are there in our syllabus what you should do is find their hybridization find the hybridization of all find the shape of all of them find the number of lone pairs in all of them find the number of sigma bonds in all of them so, so roughly 60 molecules into 10 questions 600 questions will be covered on a sheet of paper okay for example find out everything about so3 everything you know so3 one sulfur three oxygens like this so what is it you know one sulfur three sigma bonds three pi bonds then oxidation state of sulfur is equal to plus 6 so instead of answering questions like oxidation state of sulfur in so3 is oxidation state of boron in bf3 is oxidation state of instead of answering individual questions you find the hybridization of 40 50 molecules uh, shape of the same 40 50 molecule hybridization shape number of lone pairs all things on the same molecule like this then what about so3 shape planar trigonal planar and hybridization 6 minus 0 by 2 what is that 3 sp2 number of lone pairs no 3 bond pair zero lone pair like this any number of questions can be answered on the same so nh3 find the lone pairs in nh3 nitrogen belongs to fifth group 5 minus 3 by 2 there is a lone pair like that how about so2 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 6 minus 4 by 2 what is this 6 sulfur you know belongs to the sixth group minus 4 by 2 6 minus 4 by 2 one lone pair 
as O2, like this. So, the shape of a molecule depends on the number of number of bond pairs. You may be mistaken. It is not number of bonds I am not talking. It is number of bond bonded atoms. Number of bond pairs means number of atoms that are coming to form bonds. Whether they form one bond or two bond, it is the number of guest atoms, number of bond pairs, number of lone pairs. Look here. 2, 0. What do you mean by 2, 0? 2 bond pairs, 0 lone pairs. The shape is linear. 2, 0 linear. 2, 1. Bent or angular. 2, 2. V shape. 2, 3. Is also linear. Unexpectedly linear. So many lone pairs are there, but still linear. 2, 3. What do you mean by 2, 3? 2 bond pairs, 3 lone pairs. Now, 3, 0. Trigonal planar. Trigonal planar. 3, 1. Pyramidal. 3, 2. Is a T shape. 4, 0. 4, 0 is tetrahedral. 4, 1. C, saw or distorted tetrahedral. Distorted tetrahedral. C saw. 4, 2. Square planar. 5, 0. Trigonal bipyramidal. 5, 1, square pyramidal, square pyramidal, 6, 0, octahedral, 6, 1, distorted octahedral, distorted octahedral or capped octahedral, capped octahedral, 7, 0, pentagonal bipyramidal, pentagonal bipyramidal. Now, so when I ask you the shape, do not tell me uh, the actual shape, you just mention, you just mention 2, 0, 2, 1 like that, SNCL2, I am even marking the lone pairs. You need not even find lone pairs now. I have already marked the lone pairs. You just tell me it's 2, 1. 2, 1. I will mark the lone pairs ahead of the formula itself. Look here. Means by the time I write the formula, you must be able to say 2, 1. Because you have already seen the one. You have seen the one ahead of 2. 2, 1. So what is the shape of SO2? 2, 1. So if you know the lone pair, I have marked the lone pairs here. So, what is it you have to learn? You should be able to mark the lone pairs yourself. 2, 1. F, BF3, there is no lone pair. 3, 0. 3, 0, trigonal planar. You need not tell me trigonal planar because if you say 3, 0, I understand as much. I understand. So, you just t tell me the coordinates. CH4, there is no lone pair here. 4, 0. Because I am marking the lone pairs, if any. If there is a lone pair, I am marking you. So, you need not trouble yourself. The next part, I will ask you to mark the lone pairs. 4, 0, tetrahedral. What is it you are seeing? Ahead of the number, one lone pair, 4, 1. 4 bond pairs, one lone pair, 4 bond pair, one lone pair. C's are distorted tetrahedral. So, what is the conclusion? The shape of a molecule depends on the number of lone pairs and the number of bond pairs. And... Listen, you just find out the lone pairs this time yourself. XEF2. 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 How to find out? X minus 2 by 2. 
8 minus 2 by 2, it is 3. 1, 2, 3. At 8 minus 2 by 2, x e of 2. Okay, 2 bond pairs, 3 lone pairs. 2 bond pairs, 3 lone pairs, <coughs> linear. Despite the presence of lone pairs, it acquires a linear shape because the lone pairs cannot be avoided. There are too many lone pairs, even if the atoms try. Okay, that's they will be taking a linear shape and the lone pairs are in the equatorial position. The lone pairs are in one plane and bond pairs are above below the plane. Like that, you can take your own example and you can find yourself XeO3. 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 8 minus 6 by 2. One lone pair. XeO2F2. The shape of XeO2F2 question given in 2012. IIT 2012, this question is given. The shape of XeO2 F2. How to find out? First, the lone pairs. First things first. 8 minus 4. What is this 4? 4 electrons are used by oxygen. 8 minus 4 minus 2 by 2. 8 minus 4 minus 2 by 2. There is one lone pair. Total number of guests, how many? 2 oxygens, 2 fluorines. So it is 4, 1, 4 bond pairs, 1 lone pair. X E O 2 F 2. This is called distorted tetrahedral or C SA. C SA. It is something like this a V, a v shape on a V you draw a line. C SA. X E O 2. Do not worry whether oxygens are in this plane, oxygens are at this position or oxygens at this position, that is not very important. Okay, that, that is secondary discussion. That is all secondary discussion. You need not waste time on it. Enough if you know CSA. Where exactly on the CSA the atoms are arranged? Now, SOCl2. Find the lone pairs and bond pairs. 6 minus 2 minus 2 by 2. 6. What is this 6? Six? 6 electrons of sulfur, 2 of oxygen. 2 of chlorine, 6 minus 2 minus 2 by 2. So, there is still one lone pair sulfur. So, how will you draw the structure? We have already learnt drawing the structures. SOCl2, 1 sulfur. Why is it pyramidal? 3 bond pairs, 1 lone pair. Like ammonia. So, ammonia, SOCl2 or SOF2 for that matter. SOF2 or OSF2 ammonia XeO3 all these are isostructural what do you mean by isostructural same shape same shape that is same number of bond pairs and lone pairs same number of bond pairs and lone pairs.